Hey everybody, welcome back for another 1113 installment. I think I'm going to title this one Pre-Combustion Chamber Conundrum. Um, if you remember from the last video, I showed you guys these two cylinder heads here. Um, I mentioned we we're going to try and salvage the chambers out of 1113's old cracked cylinder head. You remember the uh, large crack going down here, the big piece that was broken out. All the cracks that went laterally through those valve guide boards, bores and everything. And like I said, this head was already junk. It was well beyond any practical repair. So basically we sacrificed what was what little was left of the head to get these chambers out in order to save them. Uh, they all look pretty good. They all did come out, but like I said, it wasn't pretty at all. Um, we utilized methods on this cylinder head to get these out that we would never utilize on a cylinder head that we were planning on using. Um, mainly heat. Uh, we put the wrench on these things to remove them. They all have a hex uh, contour feature on the inside that you engage the wrench to to turn these out. I'll explain what that wrench looks like in a minute. But basically number two came out with not a lot of uh, fight but one three and four were increasingly stubborn as we went on down the line and like i said we used plenty of heat on this thing because we were not afraid to damage the head it was all about salvaging those chambers in fact number three and number four put up the biggest fight and we even had the advantage on number three of sticking the torch in through this large gaping hole and heating the cast on the inside of the head just around where that threaded uh, um, end goes down through and engages with the head casting. And still, it was a fight every step of the way. There. That's three out. Still got one left. I've put like a day into this thing. I've only got three of these out of here. And like I said, number four was actually the worst one. Got it out, seemed to have salvaged it, but we had to heat this head so hot so many times. I think we put it through three uh, heat and cool cycles. We even were striking the surrounding metal with a, uh, a punch and a hammer. Like I said, we'd already written this head off. It was already junk. It was only about salvaging those chambers. And we actually cracked it on one of the cool downs through the pre-combustion chamber bore, through the valve bore and on up there. We thought that would have loosened its grip on it, but still no go. We did another cherry red heat around here and finally got another crack to form going up this way and it finally relinquished its grasp on number four chamber and we were able to turn that out but that's kind of indicative of my experience with these pre-combustion chambers either they come out without a fight or it is just it's hell to pay to get these out we also just uh, put the wrench on the chambers on this other parts head, this is the one that I had mentioned, had its rust issues. We were two for four on this one. And these came out without any heat. Surprised me, but you can see how badly rusted, how you know corroded they are, how decayed they are. Um, these are right on the verge of being so rusty that they have pinholes in them. I wouldn't trust these anyway, so we basically, two of them came out, one and four wanted to be really stuck in there. We just left that alone. I think I'm pretty much writing what's left of that cylinder head off. So that brings us to 2115's old head, the cylinder head casting that I would really like to use for the 1113 project. Now, to pull these out, and there's several reasons why I may need to pull these out. We will cover those in a minute. But to do it, each one has this little Allen head set screw that goes in here. And it is there for a backup means of retention for these chambers, basically. The set screw runs down in and this end puts pressure on the uh, outer diameter of each chamber and just kind of locks it in. These set screws were 
eliminated in the later tractors and some cylinder heads actually came without any drillings for any set screws and the manual even stated that if you did not want to retain the set screws you could just cut them off shorter so that they would not hit the chamber but then just install them anyway so that they would seal that hole. Um, I got the set screws out of one, two, and four. Number three still has one stuck in for now. I can deal with that. That doesn't bother me at all. So once you get those set screws out, you put the tool in the chamber and attempt to thread it out. So that brings us to the tools in question. In the last video, uh, Fort Knox 71 asks, if you can, please go in depth on the tools and where to find tools for those pre-chambers. Also, are there any conversion chambers for the older engines to add glow plugs? Unfortunately, the glow plug chambers for the D2s are basically extinct. You can try and find them if you'd like. I don't know of anybody that's ever been successful. I've never even seen one. Uh, last I heard, there was maybe some D4 size chambers that were drilled for plugs that would maybe work in a D2. You have to drill the end of it out because the D4, I believe, has a larger thread pitch on the end and then basically re-tap the head to take those chambers. I don't know how well the three and three quarter bore injectors will work. I don't know what the internal differences are on the four chambers versus the two, so that's kind of not my area of expertise, but not looking good for getting glow plugs in a D2. But as for the tools, well, the official cat tool, and pardon this poor reproduction picture, is just a basically piece of hex bar stock, and the number of that tool is a 1F479. That's the official cat tool. I'm sure those are out there, but again, that's another thing I've never actually been able to find. So you basically make do with what you can do. So I started out with a 7 8 bolt. Now a 7 8 bolt will give you an inch and 5 16 hex on the head, and that is a close size to what the, uh, the hex uh, shape inside these pre-chambers is. But as you can see, it is a little bit loose. Um, and basically I made this tool out of a 7 8 bolt, uh, welded this sleeve on there. That sleeve is, is there to basically keep the thing centered in that chamber and welded a nut on the bottom, made sure nothing was gonna move. And as you can see, you know, being the slight loose fit and really tight chambers, I've rounded off both ends of this. And if you choose a bolt, you wanna find one with as many grade markings on the head as you can get. You want a really, really hard bolt and like I said, I've still rounded this one off. So in an attempt to uh, get a better fit, I went with a one inch bolt. Now, a one inch bolt will come with a standard about inch and seven sixteenths hex size on the top. And that is too large to fit in the chambers unless you actually mill these flats down a little bit. That's what I did to this one. And I basically took it down to about a one and 11 30 seconds distance across the flats and that is actually a very nice fit in these chambers you actually have to get this lined up just right and you have no slack there it's a very nice very tight fit it's a very hard bolt and this is actually held up rather well for me i just stacked some washers under the head to act as my alignment sleeve welded this double nut on the end staggered to flat so that a 12 point socket can get good engagement on the both of those this one's been holding up pretty well so my custom size tool definitely works better than the standard inch and 5 16 head that would come on a smaller 7 8 bolt and for what i use to pull on those pre-combustion chamber tools a big one inch drive breaker bar with a few feet of cheater pipe um, another tip for you guys i usually use a little bit of an o-ring to interface between the end of the tool and the inside of that chamber. I'll find an o-ring that fits down just below that hex contour and actually sets on top of that uh, tapered injector seat that's down towards the bottom because the leading edge of this tool can get down past that hex and actually scar that tapered injector seat and cause you all kinds of grief. So an o-ring drop down in there is a perfect little blocker between the leading edge of that tool and that injector seat. It's going to save you all kinds of grief in the long run trying to remove any burrs that may uh, end up on those things for when you're pulling on this for all you're worth. So now that we've got that bookkeeping out of the way and you guys are pretty well up to speed with what my experience has been when trying to remove these chambers and some of the difficulties that can be encountered, let's talk about some of the reasons why I think I should probably get these out of 2115's cylinder head. The number one reason, well, we'll just start with this reason, resealing them. Um, they 
come in contact with the water passage. That's why these are a little bit rustier right here. This is all coolant around here. Um, they seal on the combustion end with a heavy copper washer, and they seal on this top end with a regular O-ring. And you can see how dry these O-rings are after they've been in there for several decades, and I'm sure these are no different. This cylinder head has also sat for about 10 years since it's had any kind of heat in it from you know engine operation, anything like that. The first few hot cold cycles are going to determine whether or not these are going to start leaking coolant around any of these top sides and getting it out to run all over the block. So resealing is probably my number one concern at this point. I'd hate to have these things start to seep on me and then you're getting this thing back off the engine and you're just going to go and do all this work anyway, whereas right now is the perfect time to do it. Another concern you could have is if you had excessive corrosion inside the cooling system, you could get pinholes in these and then uh, you can actually pressurize the cooling system when the engine's running because it's going to leak compression pressure into there and start forming bubbles and start pushing coolant and then when you turn the engine off coolant can then leak the other way and get down into your cylinder find its way to the crankcase all kinds of bad things could happen reason number two why it would be nice to get these out i would like to have this gasket surface remachined now i've had the straight edge on there and i have only about a two thousandths dip that goes through the middle and that is by no means out of spec on this cylinder head and it would seal and it would operate just fine but there are some dings in here there are some scratches there are some things that i would like to just get erased and start over fresh and you can't mill this head surface with these things sticking out beyond it so these would have to come out to be able to renew this gasket surface another uh, reason why i would kind of like to get this milled i've been measuring my valve seat recession and we are getting down towards the lower end of the spec we're not out of spec yet but if we shaved a few thou off of this surface that's going to help with my uh, recession issues. I do have new old stock valves that are going in this. i got brand new guides that are due here any day. So basically we're going to start over with new valves, new guys, guides, sorry, nice thick heads on all the valves. And if I can get a couple thousandths off here, bring that recession back out, we're going to be sitting pretty. So now I have to ask myself, are those reasons good enough to warrant all the potential effort that it's going to take to remove those chambers um you know they're not mandatory you can go with those seals in there hope they don't leak and if they do leak you cross that bridge if and when you get there uh do you need to shave this head probably not um valves valve face recession is still technically within spec we're not going to be running excessively uh shallow on those and that head gasket is going to seal just fine but if we just go with it the way it is, it's not going to be the best job that I could possibly do. But here's the rub. If I put the wrench on these and they don't want to move at all, like I said, we're not using heat on this head. We're not banging this head. We're not hammering on it. So what you'd have to do then in order to salvage the head would be sacrifice the chambers. Now these chambers in here for all that I know are still good. I ran this, it never gave me a problem. I've never had excessive corrosion in these uh, water jackets. So if they didn't want to come out to save the head, I'd be drilling all four of these ends out or however many would stick in. Maybe it'd only be one, maybe it'd be two, three, I don't know. But basically we drill the threaded end out enough to crack that body off, get the bulk of it out, and then peel the remaining threads out of that uh, cylinder head, clean everything up, and you'd be good to go. It's entirely doable and we do have possible replacements sitting here that come out of 1113. We wouldn't be up a creek without a paddle, but I hate having to ruin otherwise good parts that are getting as hard to find as good pre-combustion chambers for a D2R. These things are getting harder and harder to find every day. You can't buy them new. You're really lucky if you find any new old stock. You're pretty much down to what I did, salvaging good used wherever you can find them. So it's, it's just, it's a toss up. You know, I hate, I hate destroying otherwise good parts but, you know, to get the best possible job, I should try and take that apart. This is where you guys come in. Honestly, you know, I'm not trying to drama this up. Give me your opinion. If you're in my shoes, what would you do? Because you've seen how stuck those can be. Now, I might put the wrench on 2115's old head, and they might just turn out, and all is well and good, and there was no cause to worry, you know, the whole time. Two, two of them might stick. Three of them might stick. You know, hey, if, if just one of them stuck, I'd have no problem drilling that out. You're only replacing one. You know, you don't know until you try, but... 
once you get into it, you you kind of can't, there's no going back. Um, even if you get one to move a little bit and then it wants to stick, you're committed at this point because I'll guarantee that rubber o-ring at the top is going to leak if you've disturbed it at all. So what would you guys do? I mean, to put it in a nutshell, what I'm trying to get at is at what point is it more important to conserve very hard to find parts than it is to try and make everything as good as you possibly can. When is good, good enough, you know? I tend to lean towards, I'm not satisfied with it until it's as good as I can possibly make it. But at the same time, I also try and preserve things whenever I can. So at, at the very least, it might be an interesting conversation. Like I said, everybody, let, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Thank you for listening to my rant. <laughs> I await your responses. Thanks for watching, everybody.